Hello. Hey, everyone. Hey, Shripa. Hey, Brandon. Congrats on getting your project in the scenes here. Yeah. Took a while. We started. We, we tried. We started this donation process in like uh, May or something. <laughs> and oh, the legal wow. team, like uh, back and forth. Yeah. yeah. It was. Uh, okay. Apparently, it's the first time. It's the first time a project is being donated into. Uh, existing CNCF project. Oh, so, I see. Yeah. So usually it goes through like sandbox and pool. Yeah. So I think you just have to figure out whether, like, what the legal process for that would be. So we'll wait a couple more minutes for people to join. All right, just um, we'll wait a couple, uh, one more minute and then we'll start. All right, looks like we have a good quorum. So let's get started. Um, so before I start, as usual, this is meeting to be recorded. Uh, Linux Foundation, CNCF, um, Tax Security, COC applies. Um, so today, I think the main agenda is, and, and you know, Michael and others, feel free to add on, on top of this. I think the the main things that we want to go through first is we'll get the usual uh, round, go around and get some updates from members if we have any updates to share. Um, we will go through the current document uh, and talk about what are the areas that may need additional content, additional contributions. And I think there are some discussion points that we want to um, have as a group uh, to talk about and to, to come to consensus on. Uh, and I think if we have some time after that, we'll continue with some writing. Um, Michael, want to add on something? Uh, Michael, we can't hear you if you're talking. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. My uh, mic was switched off at the hardware level. Um, so, uh, uh, so, 
yeah the uh, yeah the only thing i wanted to add on there was yeah just anything that just to reiterate what what brendan said yeah like we should just be start off by just sort of discussing anything that is like a, a specific point of contention um and then uh we can go back to sort of um just going back to the writing awesome um so i'm taking notes in the the regular um document um just if anyone wants to follow that so let's start with a quick update um does anyone have anything to share they want to share about um anything related to software supply chain yeah i added uh, some one i think a couple of sections and updated these uh, some sections so maybe uh, as we go through we can uh, review that these changes okay yeah so whenever we go through just like um stop us whenever if you want to discuss anything particular any other updates um so uh one quick update uh regarding um the supply chain security stuff so uh Yesterday was the, I guess the second salsa meeting, um, and for just as a reminder for those who might not know, salsa is the supply wait security levels for supply chain. I think so, something like that. I think they need to be a bit clearer exactly what it means. But um, it's it's uh, the essentially uh, coming from Google and the Open SSF. Uh, the sort of framework by which um, they're trying to sort of define like uh, a specification that, you know, if you follow it, it's uh, best practices, rules, et cetera, around sort of securing your supply chain. Um, and it seems, uh, you know, uh, pretty good. The, the, the thing I was going to uh, add on there was, so I'm part of the steering committee um but uh so the let me start over <laughs> one second um so let me just pull this up again to make sure it's also dot dev so just let me put it in chat here um so supply chain levels for software artifacts there we go um so that's salsa uh, this is moving quite fast. So even stuff that was on the website just a week ago might be uh, a little bit different, but the basic idea is, you know, it's supposed to be sort of a set of reasonable levels, guidelines around, um, establishing, uh, you know, how to sort of secure your supply chain. And based on that, you know, what we're trying to figure out is like, you know, what sorts of attacks does this help mitigate? Um, how does this, uh, decrease your risk and, and so on. And so that's been, uh, you know, there's there's me uh, regular meetings every other week. Um, obviously, they're always looking for for more feedback as well. Uh, but there's, you know, starting to move in the right direction there. Um, I'm coming, you know, uh, at it from both, you know, my 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 day job, but also uh, at it from the CNCF perspective, just kind of, you know, saying, hey, the CNCF is doing some of these things, getting folks involved. So the stuff that's probably um, appropriate for specifically for our group is there is some discussion about, hey, uh, it would be great to have a use case for this thing. And could, uh, you know, at some point, uh, could we get more involved with it? Like, as an example, I know in some of the stuff we talked about in the document, you know, since there really aren't many standards around what actual um, secure supply chain is, does it make sense to say, Hey, if you do all these things, you get salsa, like you, if you use the secure software factory, as we've defined in the reference architecture, we believe it to be, um, to generate salsa one artifacts that might be something, um, to sort of consider, but anyway, that, uh, that's, uh, that's it for, um, the salsa stuff. Any questions about that? So um, you're talking about the use cases as in the use case for their leveling system, 
right? Not not the the implementation that they have mapped onto that. Yeah, no, the I think the idea was largely um there might be some symbiosis there where our reference architecture, we can say, hey, based on our reference architecture and potentially the reference implementation, uh, if that comes a little bit further down the line, we could we could say, um, oh, this, like if you follow this reference architecture, we believe you to, to we believe that reference architecture would generate salsa one artifacts or salsa okay. two or whatever. Cool. Any any other updates? Any other comments on the salsa stuff? Cool. If not, I think let's jump into the document. One second. Let me share my Sorry, screen. I can find my, oh. my mute button. I had a quick comment there. Um, I feel it will be hard to define a reference architecture that only targets or, or ideally we should target all the salsa levels, right? In our reference architecture, not just one level, right? So, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I I think the the idea is um, assuming that this actually does become a living document, right? Like, because at the end of the day, I think with with some of this stuff is that it's very much evolving, right? Some of the pieces, and I think this is going to come into some of the discussion we're about to have, is some of these pieces might not be practically doable today, like certain things that maybe for salsa level four, um, and also there's certain things that are are also potentially out of scope for our initial secure software factory, like two person code review, right? Our, I, I don't think, uh, I don't wanna say it's completely out of scope. If, if folks think it, it should be in scope, then we should should uh, include it. But yeah, I think to your point, we do want to eventually hit all the salsa levels, but I think the thing is, is does that come with V1 of this reference architecture? Gotcha, gotcha, okay, thank you. Do you know if, by the way, just curious, do you know if they have an implementation that has all the way to B4? So they don't have a reference implementation of a lot of these things. Um, they have, obviously, since Salsa has come, like, you know, the, the, the genesis of it came out of Google's own internal processes for binary authorization. <laughs> Um, my understanding, uh, and actually, I guess we have Priya, if Priya knows more about it um, from some of the internal Google stuff, but my understanding, it's like, hey, here's some practices we were doing internally at Google. Um, obviously, not everything at even at Google would kind of hit those level four, but um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's like, that's pretty much correct. Right now it's more of a guideline. I don't think there is like any, there's definitely no reference architecture. And I think a lot of, like we're, we're working on achieving different salsa levels. Like I think even just yesterday, I added some stuff to Tecton Chains, which means that it can now achieve salsa two. And obviously the goal is to be able to get to salsa four, but I don't know of anything that is at salsa four as it stands. Um, well, yeah, I was kind of curious. Quick, quick question, okay. I mean, um, my, I have a feeling that a lot of this is also everybody trying to figure out really how we're going to do this sort of stuff. And so it's a bit exploratory in nature. Is that, would you say that's fair? I mean, you know, like setting lofty goals and trying to work towards them and seeing if it, everybody agrees with the goals sort of would be a way to paraphrase that. I think I agree with that. Um, I will say uh, briefly in a, in a previous life, um, we did achieve something very akin to Salsa 4, um, but it was for a very small subset of uh, what I would say is, is is a DSL language, right? Like it was, it was you know, very, very specific, very, very locked down. Um, it used a lot of proprietary processes and, and, and code to kind of achieve that sort of thing. Um, you know, it was stuff like, hey, can we reproducibly build some of these things, 
And, you know, it was like for the stuff that we could reproducibly build and yada, yada. And, you know, we were doing two person security reviews with UB keys and, you know, the, the whole nine yards. But it was like the sort of thing that you could imagine is at least given all the proprietary and, and all those, all that extra stuff, it could, you know, it would not scale to any sort of, um, uh, large scale project. It was like very much for a specific, like, Hey, here is a set of code that is our crown jewels. We want to make sure that that sort of stuff is protected. Um, but yeah, I, I think to, to your point though, is like, it would be great to aspire to some of that. I also think when it comes to some of those things, like even talking to some of the team, maybe, you know, sal doing salsa four for your personal blog probably doesn't necessarily need to happen. Um, you know, to, to talk a little bit about banking, it's like, yeah, doing uh, salsa four maybe for the core transaction logic for the bank. Okay. Yeah. That, that maybe, maybe makes sense. Yeah, I also want to kind of just uh, remind ourselves that, you know, self size is one kind of guiding principle. Uh, yep. I think that, you know, if we, we should definitely keep it in mind, but we have to make sure that it doesn't kind of drive the world because, you know, what happens is like maybe three months down the line, there's going to be a new framework and then we're going to be chasing the dragon. <laughs> so, yeah, Shoot. it's just it's a keep that in mind. To build on on a little bit of what else has been said, I, I I wonder if the way we've structured this reference architecture actually helps us do both at the same time. So we've we've got a sort of theoretical overview at the top of the reference architecture of here's what a reference architecture would be for a so so secure software factory, and then we're theoretically doing the sort of appendices with more um, concrete implementation examples of those things. And I wonder if that gives us a chance to say, all right, here's the ideal perfect state that we would all like to strive for. Now here in the sort of example implementations, here's what's possible today or what's practical in, in a more real world setting. And then in future iterations, maybe we build towards, um, a more robust implementation of the, of the higher level theory. Yep, exactly. All right, any, any other comments? If not, we'll jump right into the document. All right, cool. So um, I'm gonna just quickly go through the document. If any point, I, I, I did a run through the document. Um, I think I got most of the the points that need discussion. So I'll stop whenever we reach one of those things. Um, but let me know if I, I miss one of them. Um, so overall, I think th most of the content uh, that has been added is, is really great. Um, I really like the writing. I think like, especially with this, um, what's the document, the outline, I think was really done really well. Um, so we have what's this document, the outline. Um, in the outline, I move some of the details uh, regarding on how we are picking the projects and stuff like that to the later section. So it reads a little bit better. Um, but other than that, you know, I love this analogy of the puzzle. <laughs> Whoever wrote that, that was awesome. Um, let's go down a bit more. So I noticed this part of it, the overall software supply chain. Uh, there was some description here, but I think this could do with a bit more elaboration. So I've added over here, uh, a note over here still requires additional elaboration on each section of the sub box. Um, so I think the hope is within the reference architecture that we have, um, you know, we talk about pre-built, built and post-built. Um, probably if we could have either, you know, a bullet point that talks about each of them uh, and the things that go in between them, or, you know, just have one paragraph that mentioned to all the different parts of it uh, within each section. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, would anyone want to volunteer to kind of write, write this up? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Awesome. Thanks, Priya. 
I don't I don't even know. But yeah, I'm just gonna put your name here. You can just put my name in there, cool. <laughs> If you want to tag me on that too, I'm happy to sort of have a have a look and try and help. Okay. Well, I don't know how Google decides what to come on my tag, so I'm just gonna put names here. No worries. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks for your Axel. Um there was some feedback on this picture, the from um that I talked a bit about. Um, so I think this was a Brandon, Brandon Mitchell. Um, one of it size-wise for print, we need to make it bigger. But I think the more important part of this is that uh, we we talked about there being inputs and outputs that also need to be defined in in this diagram. Um, so I, I put in a, a note here, requires redraw with inputs, output as well to be print readable. Um, any thoughts on whether we should hold off on this until we, uh, are we kind of pretty much firm on the inputs outputs? Do we think it's gonna change? So we should like hold off on this to later? Yeah, I think we should hold off a little while until we kind of, um, I think that there are some, maybe some practical, you know, like back of the napkin kind of, things that can be done, but like as far as an actual diagram, I think we still need to um, spend a little bit more time fleshing that out. Because like, as an example, um, I know it's probably on your list of topics there, but if it's like, hey, if admission controller is part of that, then we need to include it in the diagram. Um, mm -hmm. If admission controller is not a part of it, then <laughs> then we it might be an output uh, or an output to admission controller or whatever, but we, we need to, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, inputs and outputs of the SSF. Um, I love this this table, by the way. <laughs> this is great. Um, so I think these are all described. I think generally um, the content here is pretty good. Um, Any any comments about this in general? Are we missing a few things? Are we are we covered? Um, from my end, and this is where I kind of wanted to get, uh, you know, this is where I'm a little unclear on is um, if you scroll back up a little bit uh, to that, yeah, I think some of the th stuff around I I would love to kind of have more information around, um, I guess, uh, anyway, never mind. I'll, I'll comment on it later. <laughs> All right. I, I'm guessing I'm going to talk about the keys and certificates with the emission control and stuff. Is that, yeah. Is yeah. That, 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 that's, okay. yeah. That's, that's kind of where <laughs> I, I was yeah. going. I was realizing like, uh, we, we can talk about that a little later. Yeah, I think I think we may need to be a bit more specific about these because it's kind of like um, I think what the objects are are keys and certificates, but it like saying keys and certificates doesn't really necessarily um, articulate the intent of these objects because they can be used for different things. Um, so maybe we need to split this up into multiple inputs where it's like particular keys or particular certificates. Yep. And something, um, cause I, and to be clear, I don't like, I am not an expert in the IAM space. Um, but I would be interested to know, like with some of these things, um, there's, there's definitely like, do we want to keep some of it generic by saying something like identities with some of these things like uh and then when we get into the specifics like both user credentials and like i i don't know how we want to to phrase that i just want to make sure that um it's it's clear uh yeah sorry it's just really not my my wheelhouse <laughs> um all right, let's let's get back. Let's go to the emission controller discussion, and then we'll 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 come back to this then. Um, so since we're talking about that, I 
think pretty much we are good for this. Um, I had some suggestions to put some of the, the details in the prototyping stage, but other than that, I think pretty much it all is good. Um, before, uh, there's one thing I wanted to highlight uh, for the writing team. Um, some of the stuff that we talk about, we still have to describe by its out scope. Um, if we could add kind of like a bold label like that, uh, it'll be helpful so that you know, when we do the V2, we can quickly scan the document and say, okay, look, uh, you know, all these things were out of scope, maybe we can address them. Um, all right. So where's the mission controller discussion? Um, so I believe this discussion is mainly about the question is, do we want to have emission controllers be in scope? And the whole question around that is that, um, as Brendan points out here, is that if we put in emission controllers into scope, then we also put in a lot of additional components regarding like how do you get the keys there? How do you make sure that the right keys? How do you um, uh, link the, the, the processes there? Um, Michael, do you want to elaborate a bit more? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there's, there's, there's multiple ways uh, to sort of view it. And I, I, I totally get a lot of folks points who have been sort of discussing this. Um, I, I, which is one is like, Hey, if, if admission controller is not part of the um, part of scope, then, you know, what are we actually securing, right? Like at the end of the day, like, Hey, what are we actually securing? But that also brings in a lot of other components. I think, or uh, not just components, but a other a lot of other factors into the conversation. Like, hey, are we talking about admission controller uh, for for what? Right? Like, okay, yes, probably something like Kubernetes, um, but there's questions around. Okay, now we need to talk about potentially right a second or or multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters, right? Because you know, are we talking about multi-tenancy? Do you, do we need to start to talk about stuff like uh, in the you know should the secure software factory be its own single tenant sort of Kubernetes environment? There, there's a whole lot of other things that we'll need to start to discuss. Um, maybe we don't want to kind of go there outside of maybe saying, hey, here are some properties for the emission controller. Um, so I, I totally get that there's a lot of stuff that needs to be discussed there. Um, I think that if there is anybody on the call who is like, hey, I think I have this pretty well thought out and how to sort of describe it very clearly, then let's keep it in scope. If there's a lot of contention around it, then we just kind of, you know, leave it blank for now unless somebody in the next, you know, week or so says, yep, I think I have a good, you know, idea of how to include this. That's just my 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 two cents though. So at the moment we are only talking about uh, basically the, the deployable artifact is the images, right? Or uh, on the cluster, whether the images are signed or not. Uh, because if we are basically, we want to keep this section, then we need to be specific about what artifacts are produced and which artifacts are signed. So we can add that discussions in the admission controller right? that you check, you, you produce the image and sign it and the admission control will check it. And if there are other types of artifacts, then like deployment channels and everything, you sign them, verify them when deploying. So maybe that's something we can, uh, we can start discussion on this. Maybe in, in the document itself, we can just put some thoughts and then we can come next week and decide. Yeah. I think, um, I think it is important. Okay. I think it is important to keep um, because it's kind of a policy enforcement point, right? Um, and there are a number of policies we might want to validate against. Um, and, and I have a question that are we assuming if this software is signed and it is secure, do we don't need to scan it? I, I think that this, uh, the answer, the question, oh, sorry. We're answering the question of provenance not so much as like what's inside 
Got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, um, something to table, but I think that was just brought up as a good point. I, I do think that we should sort of, um, at least, uh, I don't know if we, we have it in the document yet, but we should just sort of highlight that, you know, if you are currently doing um, other sort of security practices like scanning and yada, yada, like don't stop doing those just because you, you, you're also going through this process. Um, but like right now, I think, yeah, the scanning stuff is, is sort of at least uh, currently hasn't been brought into scope. Um, but uh, with that with that said, yeah, I think um, for now, you know, the way that I've sort of been looking at it since we are taking the approach of cloud native and we're saying, hey, this is all cloud native, I am assuming um, the the artifacts here are going to be uh, Docker images for now, or sorry, not well, sorry, not Docker, but container images for now. Um, I don't know if anybody else thinks that we also need to, you know, uh, I don't think there's anything that really stops us from, you know, somebody from taking this and sort of tweaking it a little bit to generate other artifacts, though. I, I think, I mean, it makes sense to, to go with the idea that things are going to be containers if it's in a cloud environment, but we're seeing also more of a trend of being able to manage like bare metal just like if it were, you know, um, like in Kubernetes, essentially. So I, I think it's going to start, you know, bridging over time into sort of maybe more traditional packages. But as a starting point, it might make sense, you know, as a level one to say, we assume it's containers. Yeah, and just uh, as a reminder, if anybody thinks like, hey, look, this should be any arbitrary artifact, feel free to kind of put that in there or, or, or speak up about it. Um, cause, and I think with some of the stuff that's been discussed, uh, in the, uh, I know I, I spoke to, um, a few folks recently and, you know, pretty much across the board, everybody's been saying, Hey, OCI spec now can just be applied to anything. And so you could just sort of assign OCI sorts of metadata to any artifact and you're, you're good to go. And so in that case, I don't think it would be that hard to extend it to arbitrary artifacts, but I don't know all the details about that on how to actually do that. As long as we keep it in mind, it seems like it's, it should be okay. I mean, if, you, if it's written with that in mind, it should make it a lot easier down the line. Yeah, my, my only concern with making it generic artifacts, I'm not sure whether um, we would also have to discuss, um, you know, the definition of those artifacts because you, they can be defined in a way that even though you sign, um, the actual manifest in the OCI um, artifact, it consumes other artifacts, which in a not so safe way. Uh, I want to go back to the, the initial questions around the, the keys and certificates. Um, Marina, I'm not sure whether you're, you're here. Um, I know you mentioned something about this before. Do you have uh, any ideas around this, any way that we can scope it in a way that makes sense? Um, yeah, scoping which piece, this, uh, the, the whole thing? The emission controller piece. Uh, I, the, basically, like around, if we bring in emission controllers, then we need to bring in like the key management, you know, how do we do the key distributions, multiple clusters, you know. Yeah, those, I think that yeah. as long as we like define clearly what's in and out of scope, I think it's fine. And I think maybe it's good to define the actors and say like these actors need, you know, you know, identity management and you need to be able to define who they are and whatever, but um, we don't need to necessarily say this is how you should do the identity management. Um, or even we can like link to other sources or our future work to say, you know, this is a way to do that piece of it. I think that would work. Do you, would you, um, would you and all others on the call be willing to kind of like take a step at trying to scope this paragraph? Yeah, I can take a look at that. Okay, awesome. Um, so I think, I think the best way to do this is I accept this change and then modify the change. I don't want to make the comments go away though. Let me figure out way to do this. Maybe just style the font to be crossed out for now. Yeah, no, I wanted to be able to make changes to the paragraph, but 
if they make changes on dollar changes, it looks really weird. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work out well. Uh, I think this is just deleting this thing. So I think this should work. Okay, yeah, this is good. Um, so, oh no. Why did my comment, comment then go, went away? Oh. Yeah, I think just select and right click, it will show up. Show that. Oh, so then I right click. There we go. Thank you. Um, so, uh, did anyone else want to volunteer to take a look at this, scoping this? I can work on it. Five minutes. Yeah. So I think for now you can just like um, scope it within this paragraph and then indicate uh, any additional inputs or outputs you need. Inputs, outputs, as well as components required. Uh, additional scope. Sound good? Yep, thanks. Cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is regarding emission control as well, so it's fine. Uh, it's a small diagram here. Okay, cool. So I think that's kind of, did I miss anything? Any, anything anyone want to bring up that I miss on the kind of major discussion points? So there's one thing I was wondering, the S1 discussion is missing. I mean, it should be one of the output, right? In, in the build. Yeah, it should, it should be. Yeah. Metadata documents? Uh, I haven't seen anything. Maybe that was missing. I can I can add that section. Yeah, that's maybe okay. So that's it's it's hard to like scroll between here. And then. Uh I think the entire output section is I think not all the inputs and outputs have been written up in paragraph form yet. I was going to work more on that um, later, but anybody else who wants to chime in, um, please do. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. We only have source code dependencies and user credentials. So what do we need? Uh, I'm going to do it here. And so we need like requires. Requires. Add um, Requires addition. This one also requires addition. Uh, not sure what we want to do for that yet, but I'm going to do this. Um, so, Shripa, do did you want to say you work with the outputs? Yeah, I, I can take. Uh, uh, and who was who else was there? I heard someone else talk. Sorry, I couldn't recognize. Alex. Was, um, he can... Alex. Okay. So. Yep. Okay. So, but. Awesome. Uh, this one requires addition. CLP. Okay. All right, thanks, Shripa, for bringing that up. Um, One quick thing about the, the metadata stuff, uh, just because I think it's going to be, um, uh, I think that sort of thing is going to be, I don't want to say a, a point of contention by any means, it's just it needs to be flushed out a bit more. Um, I, I can lead up just sort of the discussion on that, because I just know that there's, there's a lot of, um, 
discussion on right now, at least where where certain pieces of metadata where it makes the most sense for that. I think that that's going to be um, an interesting discussion. Like, just as an example, you know, if you think it has like, you know, what what metadata is in in Toto, what metadata is in the OCI spec, what metadata is in um, whatever else. And then also in addition to that, um, yeah, like, you know, if you are including an SBOM, where does that live? And there's different discussions from different folks in the community where some folks are like, actually, some of, you know, the the OCI spec should should have the SBOM inside of it, or the SBOM should have the OCI in it. Like, there's lots of folks saying lots of different things on that. And um, I I want to at least, if, if there isn't already an opinion on it, I think we should, um, we should help build one. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like um, maybe um, I'm going to create a, so this is around metadata documents, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think, so Shri, I think Shripa and Alice can go ahead kind of like maybe draft something and then we can use that as a basis for discussion or we can discuss it here, whichever comes first. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, any other topics that we want to discuss? Uh, there were a couple of additions, policy management framework. Do you want to chat about that really quickly? Is this a, does this fit into the reference architecture as a component or is it an input or output? So um, I have some thoughts on that. Uh, so to me, policy management framework consists of a number of components, right? One is a policy store, one is an enforcement point, one is a decision point. So yep. some of them will fall in the inputs and outputs, and some of them will be actually enforcement points. So uh, do, do you yeah? That. Do you think you can you can comment over here? Um, yes. And then maybe we me. can. Yeah, we can split up. Maybe this is the the enforcement point, and I, I, up to you. Which are, yeah, well, yeah, I'll put, put together a high level framework here. Um, like these are the components, and then these are input outputs, and these are actually enforcement points, and then we can show them in the diagram potentially, if possible, later on. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Um, any other points of discussion? So um, um, just a comment. I didn't see any references to signature validation or notary service. Um, that stuff, is that not what we intend to keep in this? I think we, we did have so you mean the validation like the admission controller site or something? Um, or specifically you know, anyone can sign an image. How do I know it is actually signed by who would say it's, I mean, that's yeah. kind of an identity thing too, but yeah. I, I think that goes into the admission controller scope that we Not talked you. about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So because it's, that's all validation, right? So which okay. keys cool. you have, yeah, tying the keys. And that, you know, that will inform, you know, the inputs and outputs that we have that we just said keys and certificates. This would be like, you know, your CA, your, maybe we need to clearly define a 
maybe a signing authority or a signer as an input. I know some companies have like a, a HSM artifact signer that they, they sign out the metadata with. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, yeah, that, that's actually, you know, once again, uh, one of the points where I'm a little uh, confused on, and I think um, anybody who, who understands the IEM and identity pieces would love to get um, more input there regarding like, how do the identities get in, right? And, and some of the stuff that I know we're discussing as well is like, especially with um, some of these pieces, right? Like some of the things that are doing the workload identities and the um, node identities and whatnot, they're delegate, like they're, they're getting the um, identities delegated and there's some short, you know, certain keys are being um, like certain short lived keys are being based on, you know, sort of longer running things. Like, I, I think that's definitely an area where we need to be very clear on some of the mechanisms on, on around it, just like, cause Right now, I think it's it's very unclear for folks, you know, okay, so I, I have keys, but like, you know, why, you know, as an example, if, you know, from the implementation side, why would we use Spire, right? You know, or why would we use something like Spire? And that needs to be, I think, made clear that, hey, Spire is, you know, giving short-lived credentials so that if any individual thing was potentially compromised, you're, you know, the blast radius is, is minimized. I, I think there is a fine line between what's implementation, like with certificate, certificates and keys to like things that are like implementation specific and things which kind of tie into the management. So like the way I think about it with Spire is if for every, like theoretically, <laughs> if every every compute that you do, every CPU um, um, uh, cycle that runs, you do a node attestation, right? That's also like equivalent, but it's like using the the certificates and the tokens to to make that um, engineering feasible, right? Versus the identities or the certificates that you use to you know, sign out the artifacts. I see those as two different types of um, categories as well. All right, we have 10 minutes left. Um, any other discussion points? Anything we want to talk about? I don't think it's productive for us to just go into a writing session now since we only have 10 minutes. Um, so any other things that we want to bring up? So do we have any timeline? Is there a like revised timeline? Or timeline? Yeah, so I think based on the comments that, that the three different aspects that we talked about, the emission control, the inputs, outputs, and um, expanding on this part of, not this part of the document, um, the overall software supply chain, we should be in good shape to um, then the following year just come up with the arch architecture diagram. I think we should be kind of have a first draft ready that we can, we can get a product audience review. Um, you know, obviously this is, this is my perception of it. I know, I think we have to discuss this as a group as well with, with Andres and a few others. Yeah, but that's, that's in my opinion, that's the estimated timeline. Yeah, Andres, Andres is the lead on this. So he, he is going to take responsible for timelining stuff. Um, okay. I'm just sitting in as the, the, the leadership representative. So I think I didn't quite catch that. So what's the timeline? What's well, let's say even the deadline. So I'm gonna leave that to Andrews because he has authority on that. Um, but my estimate of it is based if we get all the content in um, that we talked about during today's call um, by next week, uh, then the only thing that's really left is kind of redoing this diagram. And then we should be good to be able to at least start socializing it or opening it up for public feedback. 
Um, so with all the documents that we do with um, with the, the stack is we usually have a draft and then we take the draft and then we, we send it to the larger CNCF mailing list or the tax security mailing list to get some feedback. And then, you know, we come back and revise. So is that timeline assuming that the appendices are not going to be included? Because I don't think there's any content in those yet, is there? Yeah, so I, this this would be kind of like, here's the general scope of it. Um, again, we, we, it could be, uh, there's something that we have to discuss, but it would be, you know, maybe we'll start with just sharing this around within the tag. We'll share this with other community members. Like I, I know there's like a, quite a number of projects that are not really represented on this call, like for the weekly calls, um, but are interested. So we would share them with those counterparts as well. And then the hope is, um, you know, we we'll get feedback on them. Um, we could also like re-engage with um, them. So we'll see kind of what the new, um, what this draft brings in. And then we can decide from there, okay, you know, what can we do next? If we have a bunch of people that are really excited about, let's, let's just go ahead and implement something, right? Then we all will say, okay, let's do a couple of sprints. We will uh, we'll pursue the implementation. Uh, we'll have a group keep writing the prototyping. Uh, if the feedback is that um, we need to expand the scope, then you know, we'll spend the next few weeks, again, redefining some of the specific areas that uh, we've gotten feedback on. Does it does it answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I think when um I know maybe Andrews can give uh an idea of what's in his mind for this. But that is kind of just, I'm just talking from experience of the past projects that we've done. Cool. Um, any other thoughts? If not, we can give everyone back seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. Right. Bye, everyone. Thanks again, Brandon. Yep. Bye. -bye.